discussing about the variance of interest and variance of concern for you to be knowledgeable what the difference between these two terminologies. And then much of our time will be focusing on Omicron variant, the lessons that we learned from the Delta variant. And let's not forget the family. This is the road of all happiness. So I never, I never neglect my family. We have 37 years of conjugal life. My, my wife has no complaint about not giving any time. Uh, attend all the social program. So it's all about your planning. If you, if you can plan, it is possible. And if, if a senior person cannot plan his or her own lifestyle and the schedule, then how can this person will plan for the whole organization? Because every so often I would hear, oh, what's creativity? Innovation. <laughs> what is innovation? Creativity, right? It's almost like synonymous with each other. But what you said really makes a difference. The way that I would frame it is that creativity is the idea generation portion isn't it? It's like it's coming up with ideas. So that's where we need to make sure that mm, no judgment. That, that, that major difference between the two is that the innovation is the overall process. Eh? Diba? It's that whole uh, coming up with ideas and putting them to life is that whole innovation. Some there would say go. creativity is a subset of innovation. You know, the topic is all about transformations through growth mindset. And as mentioned by Dino, right, Dino? Um, perhaps you and I are both inspired by the work of Carol Dweck. And Carol Dweck, as, as we know, is a professor at the, at the Stanford University. And it's great because this is all about her own work. Uh, essentially, she's known for the growth mindset. Uh, having been able to study two sets of students studying in uh, the Stanford University, you know, that's where it all started. And from there, she was able to see that there are, you know, there are a certain group of people who would be able to adapt and grow and succeed. And there's a different group of people who would probably be at the onset very strong, very successful, but somehow slows down and stagnate as they go along in the journey. Uh, from, from tough to able, sometimes I take four buses, and then the last mile would be walking about 30 minutes. So the four bus, why buses? People would realize, why, why four buses? Because uh, I didn't have any money to pay for the bus, so I stayed beside the door, the street and then when the conductor came close, I go down, take another bus, then the street will get to the door, and then until, usually it takes me about four rides to, to get to Kubao, then from Kubao I go home. So those are the kinds of things that I had to, so that, that disadvantage of not having any allowance for transportation, for example, taught me how to improvise or get by without having and that's actually a training already from from there and then if i didn't have any meal to eat then eggs and a and a, and a piece of egg raw egg before in a sari sari store was about two pesos i don't know how much i don't know how much i don't i don't know anymore how much eggs are per piece i think it was even cheaper than two pesos maybe it was maybe one peso before in a sari sari store so that was two Meal, a raw egg. I just asked for, I just asked for a piece of uh, a pinch of salt from from the sari sari store owner, and that was meal for me already. So um. living frugally was what. So that disadvantage of not having an allowance taught me how to live frugal, frugally. Taught me how to be thrifty, and taught me how to improvise. So that's the that's the part. Um, her career spans not just years, but decades. Uh, Mami Ray belongs to a world-class, world-known singing group called the Mabuhay Singers. This is a cultural group, uh, cultural singing group that specializes in kundimans, and not just English, but in local dialects as well, uh, Ilocano, Cebuano, and even in Spanish, 
uh, she, she can sing songs in Spanish. What is a multi-generational workforce? Mm -hmm. So when we say multi-generational workforce, that means we have a diverse pool of uh, people, no? employees, team members, we call them, or team leaders from different generations, such as baby boomers, the Gen X, like you and me, and the millennials. And uh, sometimes in other groups, maybe they already have the Gen Zs, Gen Zs. because the Gen Zs are already like, uh, these are the guys who are 24 and below. Right. So maybe there are also organizations that have Gen Zs as well. Okay, so uh, to answer your question on advantages and disadvantages, um, the very first advantage that I, I can think of is that when you have a multi-generational workforce, you have a diverse pool of talents. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have diversity of thoughts and ideas, which is very, very important. No? So I, uh, even when I look at the studies about different generations, about diversity, uh, just like the Gartner study that I have uh, read, uh, it says that 75% of companies with diverse workforce will exceed their financial targets. And oh. they're likely to outperform their competitors by 50% more. And abundance is all about Blessing, 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 blessing. But in the local uh, chapter, in the local arena, not many Filipinos know about it. So I decided to write a book and created a workshop on abundance. And the gist of my approach is abundance is abundare, overflowing, more than enough. Every moment is a blessing. Every moment has a blessing. If you cannot see the blessing, just look again. If you cannot feel the blessing, you just feel again because the essence and the core of abundare, abundance is there is always a blessing. Always, always a blessing. It is your birthright. Every moment, which is two seconds, is a blessing every moment which is two seconds has a blessing so there cannot not 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 be any blessing even if there's a fire outside or your car had a flat tire or there's traffic up ahead initially it looks icky and you're angry and you're worried and you're stressed and you're tired but shift to the perspective of abundance. There is something wonder wonderful here. There is something wonderful here. I will have to look for it because there can be no, no blessing. When I say the hybrid in our context, now we are talking of uh, the world of work is changing. Uh, we are talking of work, which hybrid maybe means uh, different things, but of course, we are today, people like to, the working people like to have their own flexibility to uh, work, have their own flexibility of the time and the place. During the pandemic, we saw a lot of organizations sit into working from home concept. Now with the pandemic, maybe gradually erasing, we can see offices are opening, but again, we see a micron or something going back. So there is a situation where people go to office for a two, three days or one, two days then work from home. And also that there emerged a concept of work from anywhere, not only from home, from anywhere. Now you can see digital nomads in the IT industry, they are traveling around the world and working for an organization. So not only you're working from the office, you're working also working from anywhere, maybe at different times. So hybrid is some sort of flexible way of working uh, arrangement. And at that time, part of the curriculum was to expose ourselves to, to, um, to impoverished uh, communities. So we were at Leverisa ar around that uh, area in Pasay. And I was struck by the, by the community you know, uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, I was saying, you know, there's, why, why are there so many poor people in our, in our country? So I said, you know, I may not be pursuing the vocation of being a priest, but I can be pursuing the same thing, being a layman. So it was clear to me as early as when I was in college what I wanted to become. And the process profession next to, to priesthood is being in HR, in human resources. So I then, as early as that time, saw HR as my vocation. 
and I said, you know, um, I, I guess the, the famous adage that, that says, find a job that you love most doing, and you will never have to work a day in your life. So in, 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 in a great sense, human resources has become part of my life. It is not a career. It is not just a profession. It is part of my life. It is part of giving. It is part of, um, you know, my, my, my advocacy to, to help contribute in making people better. We need to have the following. Number one, to achieve a desired increased output of everyone who is out there and improve efficiency of the workforce and improve effectiveness of the efficiency and effectiveness of the employees. And number four, improve the utilization of all the available resources within our means. And in order to take you through this, we have six clear steps outlined here. And the step number one, and identify an opportunity, which area we want to identify to improve. Step two will be define the scope on which we want to cover. And step three, document the process so that we are in line and we don't forget what we are going to do. Having done that, we got to evaluate the process in many aspects in terms of all areas. And five, redesign the process and finally implement. Not until I made it really a serious business. So yeah, and then I basically after that, after college, uh, I went to have further studies in Florence, which is uh, very influential also in my art making because um, it is it, uh, Florence is the seat of classical realism, um, and also um, of course the murals. I went to Florence to study there actually murals. So. There and then, um, yeah, and we, I basically went with uh, interior designers. So I partnered with a lot of interior designers and, um, and you know, continued my art making. You know? And then, um, well, lately, actually, so for, um, I have this urge of um, extending myself. No, so it's it's. Um, I remember my mentor always saying that um, told me that um, you know to be to be able to be a complete artist, you should learn. So you should be mentored. You should create. Of course, you have to have a physical you know uh, uh, object or a physical artwork to show. It. And then third is uh, to teach. So the cycle. Of